Today, I am going to be walking you through the process of how to get MSP DisplayPort, what is also known as Canvas Mode OSD, on the DJI Digital FPV system. Now, this process isn't an official process. It has been made possible via the amazing work of the FPV.WTF team, who have not only rooted the DJI Digital FPV system, but they've created custom applications that allow us now to have proper OSD support in the DJI system, bringing us something DJI themselves have either refused or been unable to do. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process, what the situation is with the different versions of goggles, and then take you through step by step how to get this OSD working on your DJI digital FPV system. Now, just before I go further, I just want to say a massive thank you to the FPV.WTF team. There is a link to their open collective page in the description of this video. I will talk about this again as we move through, but please, please do consider supporting them. The hack and software you're going to be able to use today is free, but we would not have this amazing functionality without their support. And if we want to keep having functionality like this on future systems, please do make sure you consider supporting the project. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the goggles and the ear units and explain what the situation is with the different hardware and firmware versions, and then we'll jump into the actual process itself. So the first thing I'm going to explain is the situation with the current different versions of goggles and the ear units. We're going to start with the DJI FPV goggles version 1. At the point of me making this video, the current latest version of firmware is version 01.00.0606. That firmware is fully compatible with the DJI FPV hacks such as the FCC and 1200 milliwatt, and it is also fully compatible with the root mod and the new WTF OS and MSP DisplayPort. If you are on V1 goggles and you are running an earlier version than this, there is no reason not to upgrade. There are no restrictions and it is advised before you actually do this to upgrade to that version 01.00.0606 before performing the route and installing the WTF OS. And you should have that on the goggles and the ear units as well. With regards to the ear units, whether it be the DJI FPV ear unit or the Cadex Vista or Runcam Link, the situation is exactly the same as the version 1 goggles. Latest version is 01.00.0606 and you should upgrade to that to be able to do the root hack on this system. Next, we'll move on to the DJI FPV goggles version 2 and here things are a little bit complicated because there are some quirks around the firmware versions. When I'm talking about firmware on the V2 goggles as well, we are talking about the firmware version in the DJI FPV drone mode. We are not talking about the firmware version shown in the DIY mode, which you use with the ear units. The reason for this is there are two different firmwares on the goggles, and it's the actual FPV drone mode firmware that dictates what is able to be done with regards to the hacks. If your FPV goggles version 2 when in drone mode are on versions of firmware that are shown here in green, so that is the first three versions on the list, you are absolutely fine. You can do the root hack, install WTF OS and have all of this new functionality. If your version 2 goggles are on the version shown in yellow, which is version 01020020, before you can do these hacks, you will need to downgrade them in DIY mode via Assistant 2 for FPV. You simply switch the goggles into DIY FPV mode, connect them to Assistant 2 for FPV, and reinstall the firmware which will show as version 01000606, once you have done that, you will then be able to do the root hack as well as install WTF OS. If your V2 goggles are on any of the versions shown here in red, i.e. 01020015 or the new 01030, all zeros, you will not be able to perform the root hack and you will not be able to use WTF OS or any of this new functionality at this time. 
So that is the current situation with the hardware for the DJI Digital FPV system. Just one note, none of this applies to the DJI Goggles 2. There is currently no root hack for that, and we're going to have to see what develops with that as we see that system develop and we see the release of the O3 ear unit in the future. So next, it's time to do the actual root process and install the packages to get the OSD working. Now, this has to be done on both the goggles and the ear unit. The process is basically the same for both. My video is going to walk you through the process on the goggles first and then the ear unit, but you could do it the other way around. But my advice is just to do the goggles first because that way it just seems more logical. Now, this is done via a web base configurator. There is no software you need to install on your computer. You simply need to navigate to the link in the description, connect your goggles to USB, and then follow the process that we're going to do next. Once you've arrived at the configurator, the first thing you will need to do is plug your goggles into the USB and click root. Here, you'll be presented with a page asking you to support the effort. The team at the FPV.WTF have done an amazing job of providing us with this root hack, but also some of the amazing functionality such as the OSD as well, and they really do deserve our support. This page allows you to make a one-off donation for as low as $5 or as high as 250 or more and you also have the option here of supporting them via the open collective on a recurring basis as well so from me please please do support the project if you are going to use this they are only able to do this amazing work with the support of the community allowing them to be able to buy the hardware and provide us with these amazing features once you've done this, you'll now be able to actually perform the root. Now to do this, you simply click the root device button and if your goggles are connected and recognized via USB, you should have this little window pop up showing you the available COM port that the goggles are on. Simply select it, click connect and then allow the root to take place. This process can take a few minutes, somewhere between three and five minutes depending on your system. So don't rush it, let it go through and once is complete at the end, it will then say that the route has been successful. If you have problems, my advice is to close the page, reboot everything and start the process again and it should then go through absolutely fine. Once the route is complete, the next thing you need to do is install WTFOS. To do this, you click on the option and then select install. And this will add the main software that we need for installing the additional functions such as the OSD that we will need to do in a moment. This process, again, can take a few minutes. So you simply need to allow it to take place, making sure that you don't interrupt the power of your goggles or your ear unit in the process. Once that is done, you can return to the main page and then click on the package manager. This is the software that allows us to install the additional functionality on the goggles. We've done the hack, we've done the WTFOS, so it's now time to install the packages that we want, such as that MSP DisplayPort OSD. Under here, you'll find a list of available packages at this moment in time. These are the packages that are supported within the WTF community. There are third party packages available as well, but here are the ones that are supported within the current system. Here, the main one we want today is MSP-OSD. This is what's going to give us that MSP DisplayPort OSD. So you simply need to click install, allow that to take place, and then that is the process complete for the goggles. So that is the goggles done. You can check that it's working by booting them up and you should now see OSD waiting appearing in the bottom corner, as well as some other OSD options appear a little bit higher up. Next, it's time to do the ear side. As I said, the process is basically exactly the same. However, do make sure that you have some airflow over the ear unit. Get something like this, a PC fan on an XT60 or any other fan just giving airflow over the unit to prevent it overheating. So again, connect it to USB, power it up and follow the process through. So the process for the ear unit is exactly the same. We again click on the route, 
find it via the USB port, allow the root to take place. Once the root is done, we then need to install WTF OS, exactly the same as we did on the FPV goggles. Then once that's done, we then need to go into the packet manager and then install the MSP OSD package on the system. The process is basically identical on both sides. It won't work if you have one side done and not the other. You do need to do it on both sides of the system. And once it is done, that will then allow you to have the full functionality that this new system brings. Once the ear unit is done, there is one last thing you need to do, and that is configure your flight controller and beta flight to communicate via MSP for DisplayPort. Now, this process is exactly the same as it is to enable MSP DisplayPort on HD0, as well as the avatar system from Walksnail, but I will walk you through it here in the video as well. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we know what COM port or UART port our ear unit is connected to. Here you can see I'm on UART 1. We then need to put in this CLI command that's going to enable the MSP DisplayPort OSD and tell it what COM port we're using. We're going to first of all tell it to enable the MSP DisplayPort. You can find the commands for this in the description of the video. So I'm simply going to copy and paste it here from what you see on the screen and put it into the CLI and click enter. Next, we need to tell it what UART we are using for our ear unit. What's important though when you do this is it needs to be a number that is one less than the actual port that you're using. For instance, in my setup, my DJI FPV ear unit was on COM1, which means the option for this needs to be set to zero, not one. If you were using port two, you would set it to one, port three, set it to two. When you put the command in, you need to make sure that you write it so it is set to the command one less than the actual COM port you're using. Then once that's done, you simply need to click save, reboot the flight controller, and that should then enable the display port output on your flight controller to the ear unit. So now if we power everything up, you should see we now have that full MSP OSD. You can see all of the elements on the display. Something you will note is that you do still have that old OSD there as well. You're gonna to need to turn that off in the menu. You will also notice that the font is quite big on the OSD elements as well. This is something you can change. There will be new fonts coming for the system in the future. I'm not really going to cover that in today's video, but that is something you're going to see available via the WTF OS system as well in the future. But there are some cool other fonts that are going to be available too in the future. That's going to give a much nicer look compared to the standard font package. Now, whilst in this video I've concentrated on the MSP OSD functionality, there is additional packages available to install via the configurator. This is going to be updated as more and more packages become available, and it's going to be worth coming back to this to see what's been added as time goes on. There is also the ability to install third-party packages that are available out there as well, such as the ones that allow you to auto-record in the event of signal loss and recovery, or have live audio from the original DJI ear unit. However, it is worth mentioning these packages are not by the FPV.WTF dev team and as such, there could be compatibility issues when using them with things such as the MSP OSD. So that is it, it is all done. We have what DJI couldn't do and that is MSP DisplayPort OSD on the DJI Digital FPV system. And again, I wanna say a massive thank you to everyone at the FPV.WTF team for making this happen. And as I've said several times already, please, please do support them via their Open Collective page or via the donation link in the configurator. Now, just before I wrap this one up, I just wanna confirm a few things as well as talk about what happens if you have some problems. This new MSP DisplayPort is display only. It does not record on the SD card. There may be an option in the future to actually get this to record a file with the data in, but here and now it is simply a display. There is also no downsides to doing this. And what I mean by that is whilst the early test versions of this didn't have all of the functionality that DJI had originally, this is complete. You retain recording, you retain all of the DJI menus and you gain this new OSD functionality. When you do this, you may also notice that you have both OSDs. So you have the original DJI custom OSD and this new MSP display OSD. Obviously, you're gonna to want to turn off the original DJI one and you simply do that from the display menu and turn that off just like you had to turn it on originally to get it to work. 
Now, if you are having problems doing the root hack, there is a Discord server from the guys over at FPVWTF. There is a link to that as well in the description. Pop on there and someone will help you out. Some basic troubleshooting tips should be if you're having problems with the root, reboot the goggles, reboot the browser and try it again. If you're still having problems and specifically you're on V2 goggles, do make sure that you have compatible firmware too. If you're trying to get the MSP DisplayPort OSD to work and it isn't, you should follow the same steps as you would on HD0 or Avatar and that is make sure that you've configured configured the COM port correctly being one less than the actual number on your UART and if it's still not working my advice would then be to put it on another UART and try it again again doing the configuration again making sure that it is one less than the actual UART or COM port number you're using. Now that is it from me on this one. If you have found this video useful and interesting, please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. If you would like to support us to keep making content like this, please do check out the links to my Patreon in the description of this video. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you think I deserve your support, please do consider checking it out. So that's it from me on this one. Please do let me know what you think in the comments section. Again, please do support the WTF team. Link in the description. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.